Welcome and thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters in Adoption with Kelly Rourke Scary and me, Ron Rains, where we delve into the issues of adoption from every angle of the adoption triad. Do what's best for your kid and for yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to take care of that kid and that's not fair. And I know that my daughter will be well taken care of with them. Don't have an abortion. Give this child a chance. All I could think about was needing to save my son. My name is Kelly Rourke Scary. I am the executive director, president, and co-founder of Building Arizona Families Adoption Agency, the Donna K. Evans Foundation, and creator of the You Before Me campaign. I have a bachelor's degree in family studies and human development and a master's degree in education with an emphasis in school counseling. I was adopted at the age of three days, born to a teen birth mother, raised in a closed adoption and reunited with my birth mother in 2007. I have worked in the adoption field for over 15 years. And I'm Ron Raines. I've worked in radio since 1999. I was the co-host of two successful morning shows in Prescott, Arizona. Now I work for my wife, who's an adoption attorney, and I'm able to combine these two great passions and share them on this podcast. You know, Ron, I can't tell you how many times I'll be at a soccer game for one of our children or a basketball game or at a Christmas party. You know, we're talking with people around us and they say, oh, adoption. Oh, yeah. Isn't it difficult for families to adopt? That is the first question I get. Almost invariably. Just yes. always, isn't it difficult when they, to adopt? When they start the first word. I can just finish the sentence. Right. And I think I've answered this so many times. I almost want to just go, one moment, please, and pull out a tape recorder and just hit play. <laughs> Here, listen to this. Yes. I'm going to go I gotta use a restaurant. <laughs> or a flyer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, or just get a t-shirt that outlines it. Right. So I think that... So is it? No. It's, it's not. not difficult. No. Okay. No. Well, there you go, folks. That's the podcast. podcast. is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll go into the reasons why. I think anything can be considered difficult if it seems, if it's something that you don't know. Yeah, it's outside your comfort zone. Yeah, everybody likes to live within their comfort zone Mm -hmm. and people don't like to step outside. An example of that would be my biological mother lived in uh, Grove City, Columbus, Ohio. And she and her husband really didn't like to travel very much at all. In other words, she liked to be at home on her couch and wasn't real comfortable venturing out. Right. She... I'm honestly the same way. You are? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm a homebody. Really? Yes. I'm becoming one as I get older. Okay. But there, she didn't, you know, she, she'd been on airplanes before. I mean, not a ton of times, but... You know, I would have to walk her right to the gate, basically, right. and make sure she knew what plane to get on. And and she just wasn't comfortable. And so adoption can seem like this foreign entity where when you understand adoption and the way that it works, it's not complicated. And a lot of the difficult part is really making that first step, right? Kind of like, okay, I'm going to look into it. I think it is. Tomorrow. I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why put off for tomorrow what you can do today? Yeah. Uh, I think it is. And I think when you are trying to grasp a new concept and try to understand something, initially it can feel very overwhelming. It can feel very intimidating. Sometimes people don't want to learn a new process or gather an understanding. I know right now I am absolutely obsessed with uh, my camera and Photoshop and Lightroom (laughs) and it can also be overwhelming, and so I, I, I've trained myself to learn one new thing a day. Okay. And that way, in a month, I'll have learned 30 new things. So Smart. that's how I look at it. So maybe if people took the same approach of learning one thing about adoption and just learn one new thing a day, what types of adoption there are. You'll start getting comfortable with it. It's, you will. You know, kind of the way I've been approaching this podcast, because I've been on radio before, and that was daunting when I first started that. And since I got out of radio, I've always wanted to do a podcast. But thankfully for you, kind of pushing me and saying, we need to do this podcast. Otherwise, I wouldn't have learned that one new thing a day and okay. started approaching and, it. So and this podcast well, is part of Well, let's talk about it. that because okay. um, you kind of got drug into this baptism by fire, if uh-huh. you will, 
um, for those of you listeners who don't know, Ron is my brother-in-law, and he has been in radio. And I was uh, recommended to start a podcast for our adoption agency. And who better to go to than somebody in the family that has radio experience? Right. <laughs> and so not only does Ron have radio experience, but he has adoption experience. Yes. My wife is an adoption attorney. Correct. For right. our agency. Yeah. We keep it in the family. <laughs> and so that being said, I was, I think it was a joint, um, gosh, Ron, I, don't, I, I have to start this podcast and I don't know what in the world I'm doing. You've been in radio. Right. You, you know, I, but I, here's the thing. We both brought something to the table. I've been in radio, so I'm used to talking on microphones and recording things and editing and, and all that. But you brought to the table the fact that you're like, okay, I'm going to find out how to put a podcast online, and I'm going to work on that aspect. So thank you so much, because that's the part that I was afraid of. That's the part I was scared about. It's like, is this going to cost me money? Is this going to, you know, so Baby you steps. handled all that. <laughs> I think steps. it was teamwork. It was. And talk about procrastination. I was supposed to start the podcast in by March of last year, and we started in August. So <laughs> I did, uh, I, you know, I can understand why families kind of procrastinate a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the same way. Like I said, I'll pace around if I have to deliver bad news or if I have to, you know, tell somebody something that's uncomfortable right. or... Process that all yeah, in their head. I really right. have to... Think about what I'm going to say, how it may be interpreted, what I can say to make somebody feel better about it, how I can kind of cushion the fall. And so, yeah. So I think that families that are out there thinking, you know, is adoption difficult? It can be. Mm -hmm. um, as a general rule, it doesn't have to be. And so I want to just say, no, 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 it's not difficult. But it can be depending on... Your situation, your belief system. Your comfort level. Right. And your resources. Okay. So let's talk about that. Certainly. First and foremost, the perception or notion that adopting is difficult is a hurdle that you have to overcome first. When you hear stories of people saying, oh, I've been trying to adopt for years. My grandmother, sister's mother's aunt's sister. <laughs> <laughs> she had an experience where, you know, they took the baby back and so-and-so knows somebody who is pregnant and we wanted to adopt that child, but it didn't work out. And I think, unfortunately, in the adoption community and in society, people focus on the negative stories mm -hmm. and they get more attention than the positives because the majority of adoptions are successful. If they weren't, we wouldn't be doing this. It, right. That's like saying, you know, with heart surgery, if the doctor only was successful 20% of the time, you wouldn't be lined up to get a coronary bypass. Mm -hmm. You would find a different doctor. And it, like with medical issues, like with, say, a heart doctor, things have changed over the years. You know, medicine has improved and those odds have gotten better, just like... I believe they have with adoptions Agreed. and so many things about adoptions being more open than they used to be have gotten better. Correct. The understanding of adoption, I think, is getting better and better. And hopefully this podcast is helping with that mm -hmm. and breaking down the barriers and increasing the knowledge that people have. Because, again, as we've talked about, knowledge is power. Yeah. And adoption is powerful in and of itself. So with knowledge... We're talking superhero status. <laughs> Absolutely. Adoption was in the past not always openly discussed. Mm -hmm. In the past, like when I was born, dinosaur days, most <laughs> adoptions were closed. And unfortunately, conversations about adoptions were closed too. I would hear my adoptive parents make reference to, oh yeah, our children are adopted. And again, I've told the podcast listeners before that that was something that Kind of made me hold my breath and freeze for a little bit. Um, because but, you didn't want to be different. Right. I didn't want to be single. held out. up as such. Right. It wasn't something that was... It almost felt like back then because adoption wasn't openly talked about, there were very few 
uh, celebrity adoptions. It wasn't mm-hmm. something that was glamorized. It almost felt at that moment like you were the zoo animal and people were looking in at you. And that's that's what it felt like. Um, probably very similar to somebody with a disability mm-hmm. is when people look at you, you almost don't really know how to look back. Right. Well, in a similar way, I have very poor eyesight. I'm legally blind. Um and it's hard for me to look somebody in the eye when I talk to them because I feel like if I make eye can- contact and they look into my eyes, they can see that I have a disability and I don't want to be different from anybody else. And so I'm sure I look evasive when I'm talking to somebody face to face because I don't look them in the eyes for very long. I'll look away a lot. And so, yeah, it is very similar. So you understand and, and you can relate. I definitely understand. And don't you so. sometimes feel like that animal behind bars in the zoo? Right. And it's a trapped feeling and it's it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And you think, how can I escape this moment in time? Daily. <laughs> <laughs> I think things like that. Right. So because adopting is more common than the general public realizes We see adoptive families from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. It is not the 1% that is able to do this. Studies are showing that 6 in 10 Americans have had a personal experience with adoption. This means that they themselves, a family member or a close friend, has been adopted, adopted a child or has placed a child for adoption. And that was back in 1997. This study was done by the Evan B. Donaldson Institute, which I thought that was in 97. That was a long time ago. It is estimated that about 1 million children in the United States live with adoptive parents. And that was from a study on adoption from 1993. So I... So that's almost 30 years ago. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's... We're getting old, Ron. (laughs) (laughs) Again, old. something I face daily. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm right behind you. Or notice behind, not in front of. <laughs> right, I get it. <laughs> uh, someone may have had a difficult time adopting, and that situation is openly discussed more than the positive. Again, we talked about that at right. the beginning of this podcast. I think the news is, and media is a really good example of talking about everything that is wrong. You know, the glass is half empty mm-hmm. rather than talking about everything that's right. Right. When a family leaves a hospital, it doesn't make the news. Although it did. Did you see the latest article on Southwest? No. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell the story and I'm going to tell this as much as I can remember. There was a family and I believe they were either adopting in Colorado or going home to Colorado and they had adopted a new baby. Okay. And they were on a Southwest Airlines flight. This was pretty recent. And... They needed to change the baby's diaper. And so a flight attendant came and the family asked, hey, is there a place that we can go and change the baby's diaper? And so this story is like... Heartwarming. Yes. Okay. And so the attendant said, absolutely follow me. And they went to the back of the airplane and they had cleared off like a little area so that they could lay the baby down because the baby was a newborn. Right. And change the baby's diaper. And very nice to the family, went and sat back down. And then the... Flight crew got together and made an announcement congratulating the adoptive family. Wow. And then they passed out napkins to everybody in the flight, all the passengers. And everybody wrote a note about parenting and like some advice. Oh. And they collected it and gave it to the family. That really so, started getting me misty and yeah. I got the goosebumps and everything. That was That's, a good story. It was story. beautiful. That's you cool. know, kudos to Southwest Airlines. And that, kudos to whatever news source... You right. got that from because, That's like beautiful. you say, you usually hear the death and destruction a lot and the fires right. and the weather and everything else. Yeah. But you don't get the really that good stuff is adoption heartwarming stuff. It makes you smile and yeah. makes you think there's so many good people in the world and yeah. there's so many good stories. Imagine if we had a newscast that just had positive news on it. I wonder how, I think it would last, especially in this world. You yeah. know, at first I was going to say, I wonder how that would. Yeah. Hold up, but I think it might. I think yeah. people would tune in to go, you know what? I need to feel good. I've had a rough day. Or even taking even taking a negative or difficult news story 
and being positive about it. Let's and look at the bright side of yeah, this. Yeah, looking at the bright side rather mm -hmm. than, you know, being a Debbie Downer. You right. know, it's not doomsday. Let's let's lift each other up and yeah. let's look at what's positive, even if it's not the best situation. And so going back to, you know, is it difficult for families to adopt? It can be, but that doesn't mean it has to be. Mm -hmm. And it's all within your control, and that's what yeah, we're going to talk about. Yeah, a lot of it is what you make of it, certainly. Correct. There may be lots of reasons that people believe adopting is difficult, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Okay. So in looking at, at that, uh, some aspects that may give credence to the notion that it is difficult, I'm going to go through those, and then we're going to counterbalance them, Ron, because we're okay. going to show people that perceptions can go out the window. Yeah. Stereotypes can go out the window. You're hearing it from people who are in the field, the daily grind. Um, you know, I, I, as the agency director, don't ask my staff to do anything that I wouldn't do. Okay. I've done every aspect of the job. Um, I jump in and case manage if we have too many cases or if uh, they need a second hand, I, I'm right there. You know, You're I've done there consents. to deliver bad news if sure. need be. You're there. I am. I am. Okay. You know, I'm there to do consents at 10 p.m. at night. You know, I'm answering the phone Christmas morning, hiding in the closet, <laughs> helping coach a caseworker through something, um, telling my kids I'm in the bathroom real quickly as they're opening up presents just to make sure that I'm right there with them. Right. So that being said, this is doable. For those of you who want to adopt, this is doable. So can adoption be expensive? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then the families say, well, we don't make very much money. How would we be able to adopt? And we've talked about this before. We have. Yeah. There's grants. There's all kinds Adoption of grants, great things. There's the tax credit, mm -hmm. financial gifts from family members, fundraisers. There's so many resources out there. We've had families where their entire adoption was funded by grants. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. The waiting game. There's the second one. Oh, yeah. All right. So after enrolling in a domestic adoption program, families fear that they will be waiting forever. Oh, it's going to take us years and years and years. Waiting's hard. Yeah. I am as an impatient person as they come. I like everything right here, right now. Instant gratification. Right. <laughs> Amazon. I'm... Bring it to me. <laughs> oh, forget Amazon. I like the Prime now where it's right. two hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there is no end marker mm -hmm. for when a birth mother's going to choose you. But there are ways to lessen your weight. Right. So in doing domestic adoption, we've talked about keeping as many doors open as possible. The more open you are, the more chances you can be shown, and that gives you more opportunities right. to be chosen. The more limited you are, the longer you're probably going to wait. Sure, because you're closing doors. Yeah, exactly. Also, you would want to check with the agency that you're working with and see if they have a list of families that have had a disruption or an exceedingly long wait. And when, you know, babies come in through Safe Haven or we get a mom who has delivered at the hospital and decided that she doesn't want to parent and she hasn't been in our program prior, again, those families kind of get pushed to the front of the line because we want everybody to have that opportunity. Yes. Um, What's the longest you've ever seen a family wait for an adoption? Years? Uh, I would say two years. And wow. I would say that it was because of, one, their preferences, mm -hmm. so that they had many, many, many doors closed, very, very specific, and they were not willing to rework their profile book. They okay. liked their profile book. And, that's and you've something... said that before. Have somebody look at your book, whether it's an adoption professional or somebody else who's had an adoption, and say, this is what... You're doing right. And yeah, you get that advice. Right. And I worked with six moms two weeks ago uh, in, in one week and presented profiles myself because, again, we were You'll really do. busy that week. And so mm -hmm. I was jumping in and helping. And in going through the books, I can tell which, by looking at the books, I can tell which book will be chosen before a mother even chooses. And really? I'm very careful when I present because I don't want to give an advantage to one family over another. Right. So what you we don't do put is, one a little no. closer to them or anything <laughs> no. like that. Hey, no. look at this one. No, <laughs> we lay them out and they're in no particular order right. and they go through and, and choose. And But invariably, you can tell which ones are going to get chosen 
by their presentation. I can. Okay. I can. There are absolutely uh, things that attract and detract from a book. Okay. Such as? First of all, it should be a book and not a PDF printout. Okay. The book should not look overwhelming. Simple, yet dedicated. Right. You had said before, like one to two sentences for a photo, just very brief, succinct. Right. The other thing is, is that on the front of the book, if you have other children, I would not include the other children. I would make it just the mom and the dad. Okay. Um, that looks overwhelming when there's so many people on the front. The other thing that people don't understand, and sometimes agencies are worried about offending somebody, so they don't want to state the obvious, have at least five to 10 people look at the picture that you're putting on the front okay, and tell you if it's a good picture. Okay. A picture that you may think is phenomenal. May not look the same to everybody. No, <laughs> okay. it may not. And that doesn't mean that as an agency, oh, we're being picky. I mean, we would never send it back and say. Redo this photo. Right. Um, <laughs> if you ask us, we will. Right. But we don't want to come across offensive. Certainly. Uh, but. Maybe you have some members of the family that can be brutal, brutally honest without hurting your feelings. And so. again, you know, for the families that are working with us, I will, I will be happy to tell them, you know, this isn't your best angle and, um, you know, smile a little brighter, you know, stand a little closer to your husband. You know, there, there's certain mm -hmm. things that are really important. Okay. If your agency allows it, I know that we do, consider enrolling with more than one agency because that way all your eggs are not in one basket. Right. Lastly, don't make your entire life about adoption. Live your life. Be mindful. Be present. Don't wake up in the morning and think, okay, so today I am going to, you know, just think about adoption. I'm right. going to fast for an hour and I'm going to think about <laughs> adoption. And then I'm going to read every adoption blog because that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to sit by the phone for the next two hours and I'm going to wait and see if my adoption agency mm -hmm. calls me. And then I'm going to go to an adoption group this evening and just stop. How about have some breakfast, maybe go work out. Do the things you would normally do before you Live started the adoption process. Live your life. Yeah. And not to say that any one of those things are wrong. No. You know, fasting's great. Going to, you know, a reading adoption blog is fine. Going to an adoption group is great. But all in one day, right. this is going to be something that you live or die on. If you make this your all, that is going to ultimately, in my opinion, negatively affect your adoption experience because it may not live up to the height that you have created. You know, it, it's like Christmas morning. When you're younger, you know, you go and you sit on Santa's lap. Maybe two weeks before Christmas. Right. And you are like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is, I cannot wait. This and, is the biggest ever. Yeah. Best Christmas ever. You've, you've compiled your list. You've gone through, remember the toy catalogs? You know, you've combed them uh -huh. and circled the ones that you wanted. <laughs> you're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey, uh, mom, did you happen to see the wards catalog? <clears throat> right, yeah. Where is it? Where is it? And, you know, you have, you know, tallied up what you want and... Mm -hmm. You've built this up to the point where now, you know, your parents are sweating, thinking, well, I hope Santa is able to deliver all this because this is right. quite a bit. And you've and directly spoken with Santa. You know he's bringing all this yeah. stuff. And this is a fact. So Christmas morning comes, that, that magical moment. You run to the Christmas tree and the gifts are there and you open it up. Socks? <laughs> a bunny costume. <laughs> um, and... You, you know, pull out the first toy that you, the first toy you circled and it, it doesn't look anything like the picture right. and. Oh, I thought this was going to have actual laser beams with yeah. it. What Where the... Where's the kid that plays with it? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> I have to move it myself. It doesn't just go on its own. <laughs> yeah. And the music's not playing like in the commercial. Yeah. And yeah, there was the magical moment. And I don't really look like the girl in the catalog. So right. what's happening here? Yeah, it just doesn't live up to no. what you've built up in your head. And that can and happen. And especially if that's all you're thinking about, like you said, it can't yeah. live up to that expectation. So you've got to make this a part.
part of your life, not your life. The adoption process seems long and overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I believe life is what you make it. Life can be long and overwhelming. That doesn't mean you don't live it. It just means you take it in stride. I love the advice my dad gave me a long time ago. And I use it with our birth moms and our staff members and family and friends that are struggling. He he said, picture your issues or your problems as a stovetop. And if you have all of your issues and problems and concerns and worries in one pot, it does seem like a lot. But if you spread it out amongst four pots and you deal with them individually, it's much easier. In order to make it not so overwhelming, put it in different pots. Okay. And that analogy has gotten me personally through a million things in life because breaking it down really does make a difference. And it doesn't seem as overwhelming. So the steps in adoption, people think, oh, there's so many steps. Well, if you live in a two-story house and you're at the bottom of the stairs, we live in a two-story house. Every time I go up the stairs, I don't think, oh, there's so many steps to get right. to the top floor. You never look at it and go, oh my gosh, that's like 15 feet above where I am now. That's an awful long way to go. Right. You I have to climb that, first that many steps. Yeah. So again, it is what you make it. You can run up the stairs. You can take it step by step. You can crawl up the stairs. <laughs> you can slide back down on your bottom if you choose right. to. It's more fun if you have a moving box. Did you ever do that? With no. You, you, I've never lived in a two-story house. Oh, okay. I, I, it makes me want to do it. Do you got any <laughs> big cardboard boxes I can slide we, down we do. the stairs? We okay. Amazon Good. Prime now quite Thank a bit. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so when you think about it, there is the steps are creating the home study or completing a home study, creating okay. the profile book, choosing an adoption agency, then being matched with a birth mother after she chooses you, waiting for her pregnancy to come to an end, labor and delivery, the adoption papers to be signed, and then waiting for the adoption finalization. It's That's a journey. not so bad. No, it's a journey. It's a period of time. And, and in life, you there's seasons. You know, there's four seasons to every year, except in Arizona. <laughs> we get one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hot or hotter. <laughs> right. And... In life, you have seasons in life. You know, mm -hmm. you have your teenage days and then you have your 20s where you live life a little crazier. 30s where you start to settle down and you have more money, you know, than you did in your 20s. You still have the body of a 20-year-old. And then you hit your 40s. And it's all downhill. And the body starts to go, but the money starts to come. And then you, know, yeah. <laughs> you start to trade But it's a another. different phase. It's a different season. That, yeah. And each season has its its highs and its lows. Mm -hmm. So think of that just like adoption. There's going to be hills and there's going to be valleys. But at the end of the rainbow is your pot of gold. Now, work closely with your adoption agency. Have them explain the process and create a checklist. And you will feel like you're more in control. I love checklists. I yeah. love checklists so much. I'm the one who will add stuff just to check it off because then I feel like I've accomplished more. <laughs> and you know what's a really fun trick for all you listeners? If you have so much to do, you feel completely overwhelmed, create your list and then add in a few things you've already done and you're halfway done with your list. I learned Smart. that. Yeah. So then when you look at it, you're like, I'm getting there. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, it looks the same as it did this morning when I started, but still. I, hey, I, I checked a lot of boxes. <laughs> there's a lot of boxes checked off. Right. <laughs> Talk with other families in the adoption process. See if there's a support group with the agency or a group chat or something to where you can connect with other people. People, they say that misery loves company, and that's not what this is. But people who are together seem to get through things easier. Let me a give community. you an example. Yeah. So if you are on a roller coaster, it's not really fun being on a roller coaster with yourself or just one other person. It's more fun being on a roller coaster when it's full because everybody's, everybody's screaming. in it together. Yeah. Besides, if you were the only one on the roller coaster, I would be like, okay, well, this is, then I'm the one who's going to fall out. Right. I'm the only else. one that's going <laughs> to. <laughs> there's nobody else that can fall out. Right. So it's going to be, be me. So that sense of community will give you maybe not only lifelong friends, but companions in your adoption journey. Also, if you reach out to families that have previously adopted and asking them for tips and recommendations, basically like a do's and don'ts checklist, families who have adopted love to talk about their adoption. Mm -hmm. 
Families that are in the adoption process love to hear about other people's adoption. The good, the bad, the ugly, the <sighs> whole bit. Connections are huge. Your adoption journey doesn't have to be difficult, but there's so much more that you can take away at the end than just building your family. So enjoy the process, educate yourself, connect with other people, but live your life. We have a pregnancy crisis hotline available 24-7 by phone or text at 623-695-4112, or you can call our toll-free number 1-800-340-9665. We can make an immediate appointment with you to get you to a safe place, provide food and clothing, and start it on creating an Arizona adoption plan or give you more information. You can check out our blogs on our website at azpregnancyhelp.com. Thank you for joining us on Birth Mother Matters and Adoption, written and produced by Kelly Rourke Scary and edited by me, Ron Rains. If you enjoy this podcast, rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. And as always, thanks to Grapes for letting us use their song, I Don't Know, as our theme song. Join us next time for Birth Mother Matters in Adoption. For Kelly Rourke Scary, I'm Ron Rains, and we'll see you then.